For our message this morning, I'm wondering how many of us can really recall everything that happened. This story that we reflect on every year has got so many elements. 2,000 plus years ago, incredible events happened, and that's what we celebrate every year. And if it was on the 25th or not, uh, people debate on a lot of different proof on, on proving that it's this day. And I think it doesn't matter which day. There's a day a year when the whole world needs to pause and reflect. And they have markets and they have shows and they have specials in the shops, whatever it is. If they know what it is or not, it is still about Christ. And it's never been about anyone else. I'm wondering if you're sitting here, and extroverts will be ready, introverts have to think a little, whom of you in 30 seconds can tell the story of the birth of Christ from Mary all the way to the manger. Is there anyone here brave enough, and I'm going to time you 30 seconds and see how much of the detail you can say. Okay, it's a bit of a, are we representing the story of Christmas this morning? Are we just going, yeah, it was nice, it was nice. Who of you can do it in 30 seconds? Think about it. I want someone to come on the mic and tell me who's brave enough. Who's brave enough. Just see how many of the facts you can do. I need someone to try it out because I'm going to fail dismally, but I want someone to do it. Who's going to do it? Otherwise, I'm going to volunteer someone. So that little voice in your heart that says, Lord, please not me. Maybe that is you. <laughs> Who's going to be brave? Just see how many. Okay, come, come and tell us. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to support her because everybody chickened out and she's brave enough, okay? So I'm going to time you. I had the face of the whole shebang. Okay, you ready? Hang on. 30 seconds. Stopwatch and go. Okay, Maria. Can I do an Afrikaans? Sorry. No, you can't. Oh, okay, Maria was there, and then an angel came and he said, I bring you a great, yeah, you're going to bear the king of kings. So then Joseph had a dream, and Joseph said, and in the dream, he found out that Mary was pregnant, and, with, with, and they have to call him Jesus. And then they had to travel, and then somewhere along the line, then there was angels that, 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 that um, showed themselves to some shepherds to show them that there is a king. And there was also three wise men who followed a star to see that there's Jesus. Herod also found out about it, and he tried to kill Jesus. But he couldn't because uh, Joseph was warned about uh, Jesus being, you know, being um, going to be killed. So he took Jesus, and they moved along, and um, Jesus was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I I could give that. Well done. That was 46 seconds, but she was on such a roll, I couldn't stop her. Well done, well done. Incredible. Okay, it's hard to think of all the things happening in the right order. We all remember them in different ways. But I found this video of kids that try to recall what they've heard at that young age. Now, let's see how well she did. And look at this video and recall how much of the detail you would have known and you would have been able to tell. Okay, let's have a look at how these kids tell the story of Christmas. An angel came to see Ma Mary. She was doing laundry, and then the angel just appeared, and she was really scared. So Gabriel was like, Mary, you're going to have what? I can't, I can't say good. Mary, you're going to have a baby. I, you're going to have a baby, and you will call him Jesus. And then Mary was like, I'm not going to have a baby yet. I'm only a teenager. I'm not married. Then the angel Gabriel told Joseph that Mary is not lying. She, you are having a new baby. And so they met up. They went to Bethlehem, which was Joseph's old town. They ride a donkey. <laughs> I don't know. A camel. Oh, yeah, a camel. She said, this donkey's fast. Well, they tried to go to a hotel, and they asked the keeper um, for a place to stay. The keeper said, we have no rooms, literally no rooms. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph walked away sadly, but then he said, the only place in here in Bethlehem hand that, that you can stay, stay is a staple. And then he just pointed the way, and they followed. 
when the shepherds were taking care of the sheep, and then they saw angels. The angels said, a new baby is get, getting born, who is king of the Jews. The angel was singing. Glorious. And then the shepherds said, I think we should go there and meet him. The second, I think, said, yeah, I agree with you. And the other said, yeah, me too. They had to walk through a bunch of grass and bushes, maybe have to camp out a night. And then the wise men heard about it. And then a star appeared. We should probably follow that star. It's pointing down to the barn. So maybe we should follow it. Maybe. So the wise men went to Jesus. They gave them gifts. A stuffed animal, like a hippo one, to have at home. Some diapers and some wipes and some milk, <laughs> some shoes, some Jordans. Gold ring and Latimer. And I don't know how I would survive in that barn. Too stinky, too crowded, and ugh. I think he probably pooped because the room is very smelly. Thank you for coming. He's adorable. He's going to be our best friend. I love you, and you're the best baby i ever seen. There, I said it. <laughs> the new baby is going to change the world. So... Did you pick up that it was gold, Frankenstein, and myrrh? <laughs> so I'm glad that you only teach on those things once you're a little older to distinguish and discern between the right facts. Now, as part of our message this morning, there are 20 tables with a little present on them. Sinead, don't you want to just hold up that little present? So if you want to participate in the next exercise, you must be around the table where there's a little present, and if there's only two or three of you, and some of you with no one, don't you want to quickly move? It's going to be uncomfortable. Hey, but Jesus was born in a manger. That was uncomfortable. So don't you want to find a spot? There's spots here, but you need to be part of it. You're going to be disappointed if you don't. Guys at the back, I know the kids in the prams, you know, it's going to be a great moment. Just witness from the back. If you're online, um, grab some kind of little present, okay? We're going to play past the parcel. Okay, pass the parcels. Get around a table, and if there's one, only two or three of you, maybe that present must be, you know, where more of you are together. So move around a little. So how it's going to work is as follows. Maybe you should join here, my family over here. and Anyone without one there? Okay. Right. Let's see. So what's going to happen is we're going to play pass the parcel, pass it on. Okay? Um, and there's a little melody I've learned from my children. Pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on. <laughs> okay? And then how it's going to work is the music is going to play. I'm going to play on the piano, and you're going to hand it out as the music plays. And as I stop, the person holding on to it is the little winner, but we do it three times. Okay? So the third time, that person, we're going to practice first. Okay? So don't get excited too soon. But everybody must play along. So it goes from the last person, and if there's a distance, you can either send it back or throw it to the first one, and then it goes back again. No holding on to it while the music is playing. We've got people checking from the top. Guys, just check. Thank you. Okay? Right, so, can I have the piano on, Mark? That would be great. Okay, so I'm going to sing, and the moment I stop, that person has it, and you put your hand up in the air that I can see who it is. You ready? Pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on. Show me. Okay, that's the first time. Now we continue. Pass it on, pass it on, pass the parcel, pass it on. I don't know the rest of the words. Pass the parcel. <laughs> Hold that up. Okay. It's still a practice run, so the third person is the last one, so you can just hope. Now you've all got the thing of it. Here we go. Pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Pa okay. That, that was the practice run. Well done. Now, now we're going to do it again. Okay, but I'm not going to go, yeah, every time you hold it up and the music continues, third person, you're the winner. Ready? 
All right. It's not about presents, but now it is. Okay, we go. And pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass the parcel, pass it. Okay, number one. Pass it on, pass it, pass it on. And pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass the parcel. That's number two. Pass it on, da 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 da. And pass the parcel, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass the parcel, pass it. Who's that person? Stand up quickly, let me see. Okay, you're the lucky ones, you got the present, yay! Okay, whom of you are disappointed it's not you? Okay. Now the good news is that person with a present must open it now. And if you look inside, there's actually a little present for everyone around the table. Isn't that great? So you are welcome to hand it out. And if there's extra somewhere, people at the back will get them to you. Do not worry. Okay? There's some here. We'll get them to you. Don't worry. You can eye someone and say, keep someone for me. Because I think there's like eight sweets within every present. So if there's less, if you don't eat them all, leave the extras and we'll get it to those who didn't sit around the table. Okay. Now, as you're doing that, don't get a sugar rush. Listen to me. I'm not done. That's not the end of the sermon. I'm wondering, as this exercise went on, and as we were as a family thinking about today, Emily actually made the suggestion. She said, my daughter, she said, why don't we play pass the parcel? And then it dawned on me that many times Christmas feels like it's for some people. You see those who get the message. They're excited. They've got family to be with. They get what Jesus came to do. But the sweetness of that is not for you, and you see other people have it. And maybe it passes you, and you see it coming, but it's never something that you really make your own because it didn't fall on you. The music stopped, and you didn't have it in your hand. And maybe we sometimes feel, God, is there something bigger to Christmas, the message of Christ for me, that I'm missing? Because the music is not stopping with me in the hand of this truth. And it just dawned on me, God, every year we've got an opportunity again to say, Lord, is there something new about the power of this message that I don't know yet, that I still need to get? And something beautiful about the little present this morning is that once you have it, it's not yours to keep. It's yours to hand out. And maybe you think, oh, there's one for me. I hope it's enough. But the beauty of the this miracle, this gift is that once you have it, it's there to hand out and you can share and you can give out to people around you. And we must make sure on this Christmas time that we find the people around our table that we say, hey, this message is for you as well. Does it look like it's only for me? No. If I unwrap it, the beauty and the surprise is, hey, it's for everyone. And I hope that this season we can find the people in our lives where we're saying, I want to share that with you. I want to make no sure that you know that Christmas is here for you. We celebrate Christmas every year because it reminds us that God is sharing His gift with us. God didn't hold on to Jesus and say, it's my son. I'm not giving you my son. He gave to everyone. And He said, this present will not pass. It will be here for everyone. We know so well the scripture in John 3, verse 16 and 17. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. For this is how God loved the world. For God loved the world so much that he gave his son and his only son so that everyone, say everyone, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Isn't it great? God modeled it. He said, hey, I'm going to share with you my very best, my only son, and it will be for everyone. Maybe this morning you need to hear that. Lord, I am also a one, and if it says for everyone, then it is for me this year. Why is it important that we understand the sharing part of Christmas? You know that it's ideal to with family share this moment. 
Nobody that I've ever met said, oh, this year, I would love to be just on my own. Nobody around me. Most of us have something that we want to share, and we feel good if we can share Christmas. Now, there's something about the power of sharing it that I want to, this morning, make sure in our hearts we understand and we grasp something of the power of God sharing with us and we sharing with other people. In Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25, we read, and we're reading Proverbs at the moment in December, and it says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Share and become rich, basically. Be stingy and lose everything. If you don't share, you lose what you have. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Why did Jesus come to earth and was shared by the Father with us. Because God is so much wealth in himself. He's an incredible God and he modeled something. He said, look at what happened the moment I gave Jesus. Look at the blessing for mankind as a result. When we are stingy and we hold back, we're saying this little present, if one of you ran out and said, hell no, I'm not sharing my little present, it's all mine. People around the table wouldn't go, oh, you know, he's just... He really likes his presence. So no, bring it back. It's something powerful that we need to realize God did for us. And therefore, we must say, all right, God, if we receive this gift, how do we share it? So that nobody in my life will feel that the music stopped and they had nothing to show for it. Such a stunning promise that we have. The more you give, the more you get, the more you share God, the more He becomes real to you. The more you give of yourself, the more generous you are, the wealthier you become. And that's on all levels. Have I not perhaps found a seasonal moment where I'm saying, oh, oh, let's put on the Christmas lights, let everybody see, we're celebrating. But there's something beautiful to the message of God that I've not shared yet. Maybe my life must live a permanent place, be a permanent place, and shine a permanent light for people to go, I'm tasting of the goodness that God has given you. I'm sharing in that. There are terrible results when we don't. We think we want to keep, and that's better for us. I want to tell you this little story of Jamie. There's a photo of Jamie there on the screen. Jamie didn't figure this out yet. So kids, this is a lesson to you. Jamie went to his school party. It was the end of the year. Whom of you had them at the end of the year? Like three weeks before the school closed, yeah? And we pay for those weeks, but you just party all the time. Anyway, those weeks. So one of those weeks, there was a class party, and his parents dropped him off 10 minutes earlier than the rest of the children. And as he walked into the classroom, everybody had to bring something, and he brought a little plate of chocolates that his mom gave. And she said, Jamie, remember, everybody brings and share with one another. Yeah, okay. So here he goes, puts it down. He's the first one there. But now he starts hearing things. Jamie! Uh, anyone heard that little voice screaming at them from the cupboard? That same one. So screaming at Jamie, and Jamie is standing around. I should share, I should share, I should share, I should share. <laughs> Nobody here yet getting late. I've been already waiting three full minutes. And so the temptation got the better of him. And he said, listen, I'm not sharing these good things. So he ate as much as he could. Whatever he couldn't eat because he was scared somebody might come, he put in his pockets. And what he couldn't fit in his pockets, he left in the plate and he hid the plate somewhere in the garden outside, but it's cool, just underneath the little bush there. And when the rest came, he was, oh, hi, hi, you know. And they started playing outside because it wasn't time for everyone to start unless everybody's there. And they were playing and running around and swinging and, you know, doing all the activities. And after a while, Jamie didn't feel as good as well anymore. The chocolate was working him. And then... The teacher called them in, said, kids, it's, it's time for us to have a party together. Let's come and share all the wonderful things. And he didn't feel very well. 
And as he got to the table, to his surprise, there was the most amazing things to eat. But Jamie didn't want any of it because he didn't feel that well. But he thought, luckily, I still have the chocolate in my pocket. But because of all the running, as he took it out, it stuck to his fingers. He couldn't eat it. I don't think he could wear those trousers anymore. But luckily, he had the chocolate in the garden. But when he got there, the ants were all over it. And Jamie learned the very expensive lesson. If you don't share, you can't keep it. You lose what you even have. Jamie had to read Proverbs 11 to see to share. If he shared that, he missed out now on everything else. But if he shared it, there would be the beauty of getting so much more than what you think you lose in that moment. I want to share with you just five things why it's important for us to share Christmas. And it all starts with different, word, different letters from the word share. Okay? So every letter stands for something else. You can easily remember it. It's going to be great. Okay, the first one is why is it important that we share the Christmas story? It's because it's, it is supernatural. Okay, when God became a little boy in his, in his son being born as a human being, that is incredible. Why do we share that story? Because it's never happened. You can get all the myths of the Greek religions. That's not true. This is true. God became man. It's incredible. And in John 1 verse 14 we read, So the word became human and made his home among us. God lived with men. It's incredible. Supernatural. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. God couldn't wait for that moment. For so many years and generations, he said, guys, it's coming, it's coming. Boom, there it happens. And the angels and the heavenlies went crazy. We share that because it's the only occurrence like that ever taking place. That's why we share that message. No one else can say, I hear your story, but let me trump yours. I had the story. There's nothing. I'm sharing with you what you haven't seen before. The H is for God's help. He came to help us all, no more being a slave of darkness, brokenness, no more us don't knowing what to do in life, no solution for us not being able to keep the law. He came to, to set us free, to help us. And that's what we share with others. Do you know what God did for me? I've got a victorious life now. It's true for you. Can I share that with you? He didn't leave us the way we are. And we read in Psalm 54 verse 4, Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. I love that translation. The upholder. Emily, come here quickly. I had to ask Emily. She's the youngest of my three and the lightest. Look what happens when God upholds us. So she's walking, and then what happens? She falls, but God upholds us. He holds us up, and we go, and we think, oh, God, are you with me? Are you still here to help me? Oh, and God upholds us, and he doesn't have the back pain I have. He's actually fine. No, he says. But God came to permanently dwell with us and help us and be there and uphold us. God is our helper. The Holy Spirit guides us. He teaches us. He gives us church. We have family to belong to. Isn't that great help? If we be on our own, there's no one to come around you. What a lonely way it will be to live. But God said, I'm here to help you in whatever way you need. That's something to be shared. If you have someone whose life needs that help, who's still lost in their sin and don't know there's a Savior, don't we, sh don't we share with them then? Saying, you don't have to stay there. Somebody will pick you up, brother, and put you on a solid foundation, my sister. The A is that God is always with us, ever present, always, always with us. Joshua 1 verse 9, God says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Always, all the time. Isn't that something great to be shared? How many people say, oh, I think God forgot about me. Oh, I'm praying against the ceiling. 
Oh, I don't think God is with me anymore. I walked away from God, thinking that God is someone that you can leave. He's everywhere all the time, faithful in every situation. If you're sitting here this morning and going, I've got so much to thank God for, He was in every moment. If you're sitting here thinking there's so much that was hurting me, and this year I have to get closure on those things, God was there as well, all the time upholding you. That's something to be shared. God is sharing His presence with us all the time. His faithful um, embrace all the time. Never can we move away from that. That's a great message. And that's what we want to share over Christmas. The R is for radical. God gave it all. His love was overwhelming. He didn't give a little bit. He gave everything of Himself. I love this message translation or paraphrase of Ephesians 5 as 1. Watch what God does. Then you do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with Him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. And now here it comes. His love was not cautious, but extravagant, radical. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of Himself to us. Love like that. God showed us. And even when Jesus was praying in the garden, he said, Lord, this is a tough one. I'm not sure I can do this, but if it's your will, I'll give everything. It was a radical obedience until death because he knew what was lying behind it. I'm saying, Lord, am I radical enough to tell the story of this radical love? Do I really know it for myself? Am I saying, oh, God, thank you for thinking of me every now and then? Then I don't know God. God is saying, I'm extravagantly loving you, not cautious. What if he fails me? What if I love Stian and then after a while he forgets about me? I, I can't love Stian that much. I'm, I'm a bit careful, you know. Or maybe Gerdi, but what if Gerdi forgets to pray then? No, God is saying extravagant, I love you, regardless what. Because what you do has never made you good enough for love. It's just because of Jesus. That's a radical love. How many people in your life? Are you struggling to share love with? Because they don't deserve it. They hurt you. They disappointed you. You're thinking, I can't, I can't this, this Christmas, I can't share with you what I feel God gave me. But Paul is writing to them. He said, don't you want to radically, extravagantly share this love? Because you've got it for free as well. Regardless of your mistakes, regardless of mine, I want to share that. The last one is eternity, an eternity with God, the promise of being with God now and forever. In John 1, 1 John 5, verse 13, it says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know, that you may know, that you may know that you have eternal life. Not, ooh, I really hope. I'm not sure if I get one day to God, and, and I, I'm not absolutely sure I can just... Hope that I've done my best. That's not the gospel. The gospel is that you come one day and you're saying, Lord, I started my eternal life the moment I met Jesus. And I knew absolutely for sure then that I'm included in eternity with God. That's God's gift that he shares with us. No wondering and hoping if you say, Jesus, my Savior and my Lord, a new life in you. Eternity starts with God and there's never an end to us being with him. What a gift. You don't have to wonder about it. I shouldn't ever be discouraged because I've done something wrong. And now what if? Because in that moment, I'm reminded that God is with us. The supernatural God is helping us, always present, upholding us, and saying, eternity with you is our reward together. That's why we need to share this Christmas message this year. I was so blessed when... Kathy and Skulk contacted me um, yesterday or the day before and said, this Christmas, on this day, if there's anyone here that do not have anywhere to go, that's on their own, their house is open. They've got a table with food ready for people. So if you today have nowhere to go, they are an example of that. They want to share that. Kathy, don't you want to just wave at them? Anyone who wants to have a Christmas meal and you don't know where to go, go to Kathy and Skulk. They're going to be ready for you. Isn't that great? There's something to share. Thank you. Make sure that you share what you have in whatever way that you can. Because it's an incredible message 
of Jesus that came for you and me. This morning, we're going to celebrate this Christmas time, Christ coming for us by enjoying the communion. And I'm saying enjoying because even though it's a piece of bread and a grape, it's enjoying what God shared with us. And it is for everyone. And if you this morning are going to take the piece of bread, then you are reminded that Jesus said, the moment you eat of this, this gift that God shared with us is for you. And you become part of that. It becomes part of you. That bread is absorbed into your body. It becomes part of your being, your fiber. And if you're saying, Jesus, thank you for that gift this morning. You eat that bread, you celebrate it. And when you eat that grape and the juice explodes in your mouth as you bite that grape, and you say, Lord, thank you for salvation through the blood of Jesus. And now I'm a free person, not bound to sin anymore. But I declare that I believe in you and therefore in this very moment, salvation is found in Christ. So take a moment, unwrap the bread, hand it out to one another and do a prayer then by yourself or if you want as a family, saying, Lord, thank you for this gift that you shared with us 2,000 years ago and today still and we want to share it with one another as you share with us. Let's take a moment and do that. I realize that perhaps this morning you must get to a place where you want to say, Lord, I, I don't think I've ever really received this gift of Christ, the Savior of my life, the restorer of my brokenness. 
or maybe you want to this morning take a moment and I want to pray then with you. If you are here and you're saying, I need to re receive this gift that's available to me that God is handing over to us through His Son and say, here I am, I've given my life. Just take it and receive this morning my gift of new life, of, of sonship in God. And if you realize that maybe you've known of God, maybe you celebrated 30, 40, 50 years of Christmas, but you've never really opened that package and said, Lord, it's thank you that it's for me, that you had me in mind. On the cross, you thought of me because that's what the Word of God is saying. He knows of every detail of every person and He knows of you this morning. Then I want to pray for you. Don't you want to close, all of us close our eyes and just allow a moment that Christmas becomes real, that Jesus becomes real this morning for people. If you want me to pray with you and you want to say, Lord, I want to receive this gift of new life and salvation. That's me. I, I, I need to receive it this morning. Don't you want to just put up your hand quickly and I'm going to pray with you. Then this is your moment. Just put it up very quickly and say, I want to be part of that, receiving that gift. If you're watching online and that's your moment, Lord, I want to pray with everyone here who's saying, that's me. I want to receive Jesus into my life. This gift that you shared with us, thank you that it's for me as well. Lord, thank you that the moment I say yes to you, I say no to all the things broken and destroyed in my life, everything that I've done wrong, where I've failed, through the cross, that's dealt with, it's not part of me anymore, there's no guilt with me anymore, because you carried that on the cross, Jesus, and we want to thank you for that. And not only did you die, but you rose again, you conquered death, and now you've given us new life and we belong to you. We believe in you and receive you this morning. And I pray for everyone who wants to say, yes, I receive that. Come in this very moment, Lord. Enter their lives. Transform them from the inside out. That they will know, that they will know, that they will know they belong to you. May that be a change in their lives right this very moment. To the glory of your name. Thank you, Jesus.